by TV. There's WrestleMania in our preview of WWF SmackDown. This title adds new features to the genre without sacrificing the pile-driving action of old. And if you're having a problem with your past life, don't lose your head. We have a strategy guide for Playscape Torment. Plus, we review Will Wright's latest title, The Sims. If you thought controlling a metropolis was hard, you don't know the half of it. Stick around. It's game time. Welcome to another edition of GameSpot TV. I'm Adam Sessler. Now, it should come as no surprise that driving games are pretty popular. You can see that in the arcade, with long lines to sit in a plastic car or sit on a simulated motorcycle. And, of course, it's very popular for home on a console or a PC. You can see that with Gran Turismo or even the more lighthearted action of Mario Kart. But we asked ourselves why. Why are driving games just so popular? Nowadays, it seems you can't throw a rock at a stack of video games without hitting a driving game. The appeal is fairly clear-cut for youngsters who are not yet of legal driving age. For them, it's a chance to get behind the wheel, a taste of things to come. But for others, the draw is not so clearly defined. Could it be a case of forbidden fruit? Might a video game be a person's only chance to get behind the dash of a prohibitively expensive Austin Martin, or even a taxi? For a licensed driver, it may simply be an opportunity to break a few rules thrill-seeking at its most harmless. Nothing I can't handle. With a limited afterlife and no real consequences for collisions, driving games rule. In fact, both high-speed hijinks and recklessly running from Johnny Law are popular themes in driving games. But when developing an appetite for all things of a vehicular nature, you must first acquire a taste for the flavor, the essence of which is the race. Racing games rely heavily on the notion that game players are already familiar with the basic concepts. Starting point, competitors, track and finish line. The objective already ingrained in the player's mind. Carrying over from its quarter-munching arcade heritage, the checkpoint race requires players to cover a certain distance of track within an allotted amount of time. As unlike-like as this may seem, by design, this type of gameplay rewards players for precision driving. Walking hand-in-hand -hand with an arcade-style gameplay is an arcade-style physics model for the cars. Generally speaking, this allows for a kinder, gentler consequence with rough-and-tumble behavior. Contrasting this is the more realistic racing sim. Gone, of course, are the checkpoints in favor of longer and ain't over till it's over races. And players are often given finite control over their vehicles, right down to the use of manual transmission. Wrap these elements into as many video games as there are glamorous professional races, and you can begin to see the appeal of the racing game. But the phenomena doesn't end here. Driving games have evolved into some very exciting and entertaining directions. For example, how fun would it be to take those 120 mile per hour speeds out into a traffic congested highway? And how much more fun would it be to add the element of law enforcement into the mix? The truth is driving games are limited only to the game designer's imagination. How about we do away with the racing aspect altogether and just drive around blowing stuff up? Just a good old boy. Heck, we could even license characters from a popular television program if we can find something that's affordable. Fighting the system like a true modern day Robin Hood. And why pay for a license if you can come up with your own characters and simply put them in familiar automotive tight spots? Whatever the game companies decide, it's the game fan who does end up winning. And I suspect driving games will survive as long, if not longer, than their real-life counterparts. One of my favorite driving games is Beetle Adventure Racing for the N64. It's lighthearted fun and excellent advertising for Volkswagen, but it is something worth checking out. Enough about me, though. Let's check the game news.
Infograms announced another Alone in the Dark sequel, which will be available on multiple systems, including the PlayStation and Dreamcast. Sierra Studios announced that a Homeworld expansion pack titled Homeworld Cataclysm is currently in the works. Sega of America has officially announced that the action puzzle game Choo Choo Rocket will be hitting U.S. doors March 2, 2000. It is the first Dreamcast game to make use of the multiplayer capabilities of the Dreamcast network. In other gaming news, Sony Computer Entertainment recently revealed that the PlayStation 2 is not fully backwards compatible with all current PlayStation titles. Reasons for this incompatibility has not been specified, nor how many of the current titles will not work with the PS2. For the latest in gaming news, make sure you check out the GameSpot.com website. And if you can't get enough of those driving games, come see our driving games feature again at the GameSpot TV website at ZDTV.com slash GameSpot TV and check it out in real video. Coming up on GameSpot TV, we lose a few teeth in our review of NHL 2K for the Dreamcast. If you're into hockey, you're going to love this. Welcome back. Now you might ask yourself, what do Barbie nail designer in a post-apocalyptic world hurling towards the sun have in common? Well, we have the answer for you. It's Mattel Interactive, who's coming out with Earth 2150. European developer Topware Interactive brings us Earth 2150, a real-time strategy game that takes place in a future where years of warfare between three factions have knocked the Earth off its axis. As a result, you must transport your people off Earth to search for another inhabitable planet. The three factions are made up of the Eurasian Dynasty, the United Civilized States, and the Lunar Corporation. And as in most RTS titles, resource gathering is used to not only build up your military and your bases, but to also build a transport ship to help your people escape. The game will have sea, air, and ground units, and players can choose to let the computer be in charge of construction and any secondary tasks if they prefer a more action-oriented game. The game has a complete 3D engine with total terrain deformation. Over the course of the game, as Earth is being pulled closer to the sun, the landscape becomes more parched and barren. Already released in Europe to excellent reviews, the American version will include improved AI and a complete multiplayer experience. You can look forward to searching out for a new planet when Earth 2150 is released May 3rd. That many Europeans can't be wrong. Well, this next game has had many a hockey fan waiting in great anticipation. It's NHL 2K for the Dreamcast. Now, we know they can probably combine the speed and graphics of the Dreamcast with the excitement of a hockey match, but can it live up to the standards set by NBA and NFL 2K? Let's find out. Riding into the Dreamcast world on the coattails of NFL 2K and NBA 2K, NHL 2K has some pretty impressive shoes to fill. Along with superior graphics, NHL 2K brings to the world of Zambonis and Chip Teeth gameplay that rivals the best hockey games out there. With the standard rookie pro and all pro settings, as well as three speed settings for the game, one may tailor the pace of play to their specific needs. The control in NHL 2K seems simplistic at first. But upon further examination, it reveals a subtle and complex system. Movement, shooting, passing, and team management that takes advantage of the entire Dreamcast controller. Moving is reliant solely on the stick. There are no buttons for decks or direction changes, so you must rely on the speed of your left thumb to snake through the defenders. A shot can be placed to a specific part of the net by changing the direction of the analog stick while releasing the fire button. But these kind of features aren't what makes the game feel like the real thing. This is done through the skilled execution of the game's physics. The checks in the game are momentum-based. Therefore, a slow-moving player will have little chance of resisting the hit of a rapidly skating opponent, even if the opponent is smaller. Along with this, the computer AI is based on true hockey situations. The graphics in NHL 2K are by far the best to date for a hockey game, but are a bit rough when compared to the other 2K cousins. What really stands out are the animations, watching a puck skitter across the ice, players diving to block shots, and checks that will all make your jaw drop. This game looks great. 800 players have their faces mapped, and there are over 700 motion-captured animations. 
This said, NHL 2K easily lives up to the standards expected from Dreamcast owners. Though the game does lack some of the intricacies of NFL 2K and NBA 2K's creative player mode. It more than makes up for it in the look and gameplay. Claiming it a must-have for DC folk, Ryan McDonald of VideoGames.com gives NHL 2K an 8.6 out of 10. As a point of comparison, you also may want to check out EA Sports NHL 2000 for the PlayStation and the PC. Now, Final Fantasy Tactics was a strategy RPG that came out in 1998 and was very well received. Now, the same team is back with the same engine, but this time it's a combination action-adventure RPG game. A lot of people are excited about this one. It's Vagrant Story. The closest equivalent to Vagrant Story in design, philosophy, and gameplay is Konami's Metal Gear Solid. In a sense, it's a tactical espionage action game set in the Middle Ages. The story follows the charmingly named Ashley Riot, a member of the secret group Risk Breaker. Ever since his family was killed, he has devoted himself to work. Unfortunately, now he's been framed for death and hostage taking, forcing him to clear his name while becoming consumed by revenge. Combat in the game uses location-based active time battle systems, similar to the original Parasite Eve, with a mix of Cobalt 2's torso and limb targeting system thrown in the mix. Ashley can upgrade weapons, which also possess memory, so that using a weapon against certain types of foes will make them better attuned towards those enemies in the future. Currently, the import copy of the game has impressed many with its sound, graphics, and gameplay. It's a very cinematic game and has clearly reinvented the Final Fantasy Tactics engine for a full-on 3D experience. Look for Vagrant Story later this year. It would look like there is good reason to be excited. So if you'd like to see the preview of Vagrant Story again, come on down to the GameSpot TV website and relive the magic in real video. And while you're there, find out how you can be on GameSpot TV. If you have a cheat code or a short review that you'd like to share with us, then send us a V-mail. And if we do receive it, we'll give you a GameSpot TV t-shirt, making you a very happy man, just like Mark of Hayward, California. Hi, this is Mark from Hayward, California with some Unreal Tournament cheat codes. These codes only work in the single player tournament or practice session. Press the tilde key to bring down the console. To start packing, type in loaded and you'll get every weapon in the inventory. If you want to take some shortcuts along the way, type in ghost and you'll have the ability to walk through walls. For more cheat codes, go to the GameSpot TV website. Coming up on GameSpot TV, there's Warriors and Wizards in our preview of the Diablo S RPG for the PC non Welcome back. Now, Westwood Studios' new title, Knox, takes place on a Renaissance Earth filled to the brim with magic and beasties. Now, we're still playing the game and giving ourselves carpal tunnel in our mouse hands, but we decided to give you a taste of the things that are to come. It's fair to say Knox from Westwood Studios is Diablo-like, but it's a far cry from a clone. Knox has its own personality and it plays differently from Diablo. In the game, you play Jack, who has been transported from a South Florida trailer to Knox, a Renaissance Earth with magic. In the game, you can play one of three character classes, Warrior, Wizard, or Conjurer. One of the interesting elements of the game is the True Sight system, which only allows you to see as much of a room as if it was in a first-person perspective. The game is driven by the standard experience points and level gain system. As you gain experience points, your four character attributes, health, intelligence, strength, and speed, will increase depending on your chosen class. Diversity seems to be a key element in Nox, and playing the different classes makes for a different game. The first few hours of play is entirely different for each class, with different locations, characters, and quests. So far, the game is a lot of fun, and it will probably appeal to fans of Diablo's simplistic role-playing style. The game also has a kind of offbeat humor, which is well appreciated also. Now, the Need for Speed series from EA is a well-appreciated title in a genre that can put out some pretty boring games. Now, we got an early look at the Need for Speed's new title, Porsche Unleashed, for the PC. EA's Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed for the PC is the sequel to last year's High Stakes. 
Porch Unleashed looks like it will not only be an improvement on the last in the series, but will contain all the amenities that gamers wanted but couldn't get. As the title implies, the game focuses on that infamous German mainstay, the Porsche. Pulling from the last half century of the company's engineering, you're able to race over 80 car models on 12 different roads and tracks. Porsche Unleashed brings the gamer back to point-to-point -to -point road races that fell absent through the last Need for Speed games, while continuing the tradition of closed-circuit tracks. An all-new graphics engine helps to make this an exceptionally good-looking game. Increased polygon count, dynamic sky movements, and a damage model that not only affects the look of the car, but the handling, all work towards a very realistic driving experience. When it chips, EA's Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed will contain a history of the Porsche company, making this game ideal for the hardcore auto fan and ready for the casual gamer. Look for it in March. It's a little cheaper than buying one for yourself. Now, it would seem that there are more wrestling games out on the shelves than ever before, which is not necessarily always a good thing. But this new title is using an engine from a Japanese wrestling game, and it seems to be far better looking than most I've ever seen. This is WWF Smackdown. WWF SmackDown will offer more than 30 selectable wrestlers, including The Rock, Mankind, and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Elements that stand to set the game apart include a story mode which will help model the game after an actual WWF television show, with events in the backstage areas and conversations between characters telling the story. You can also leave a match and go backstage to areas that include a parking lot and a boiler room. This is different from WCW Mayhem and that you can actually choose where you want to go. Visually, the game looks different than other PlayStation wrestlers. While the look may be grainy, the animations are pretty good and promise more natural movements. An early build of the game also showed that collision detection was impressive. The game also appears faster than other titles, and grappling has been replaced with moves executed from the standing position. Simply hitting the circle button and a direction will let you grab and hurt the opposing wrestler. Now while the game looks cool, the gameplay is still something that is yet to be determined, but you can expect us to take the game to the mat by its upcoming release. Now, if you notice a bunch of gibberish that was up on the screen that was coding for the game, sometimes that shows up in an early beta copy like we had for SmackDown. But if you'd like to see that preview again, then come on down to the GameSpot TV website and check it out in real video. While you're there, take our preview poll. Which of all the many, many previews on the show do you want the most? Coming up on GameSpot TV, it's your chance to take over the birds. We have a review of The Sims. And if you're in anguish over the PC role-playing title, Planescape Torment, stick around. We have the strategy guide. Well, The Sims has definitely proven to be a very habit-forming game as you find out all the potentially interesting combinations of little people in a house. Here's our review. The Sims from Maxis is about creating, managing, and controlling the lives of tiny computerized people who dwell in miniature homes. The game's excellent music, detailed scenery, and cleverly created characters go a long way towards fulfilling this intriguing premise. The game takes place entirely within a small suburb just outside of Sim City. And the streets, houses, and fixtures are all colorful and detailed in style, consistent with the Sim City games. Your Sims can get into all sorts of trouble depending on what choices you make in their design and actions. If you make your Sim messy, be prepared to micromanage his hygiene and household chores. Or if your Sim is not very active and outgoing, it's going to be tough for her to make friends. There are ten career paths available to Sims, including science, entertainment, and sports. One of the most important things to do is to buy things, whether they be appliances or furniture for the interior of your house or walls, windows, or even a second story for the outside. There's quite a variety to choose from, and Maxis intends to continually provide new household goods for download. Overall, The Sims is an addictive and interesting game to play. Gamers and non-gamers alike will find themselves engrossed in The Sims' bright-looking, real-sounding, and highly detailed world of miniature people. Andrew Park of GameSpot.com gives The Sims a rating of 9.1 out of 10. 
Like monkeys and heavy machinery, claymation and gaming just don't make for the best combinations. But nonetheless, Neverhood and Skull Monkeys are games that really do have quite a following. Now, Boombots is the latest from the Neverhood team. It's not a very good game, but it actually does have a pretty watchable intro. Go fish. You better not be cheated. I don't care. Now, for a newcomer, a game like Planescape Torment can be a very difficult game to get used to. So we have some tips for all those newcomers to the game. They can help you get started and keep you going. Planescape Torment is one of those role-playing games that once you start, you'll find those other things in life, like eating and sleeping, will quickly be overlooked. But facing a large and challenging world of the plains and its deceased inhabitants can be daunting. Choosing the right character attributes, making the right decisions, following the true path to righteousness, I mean, the path out of sigil is no easy feat. I'm here to tell you, hang in there, nameless one. There is hope. Your first challenge in Planescape Torment is selecting the attributes to define your character. The thing to remember here is that there are no wrong answers. No combination will necessarily yield better results. Some people tend to try and match their character to their own personality. That way, the decisions you will make will be more intuitive. Sure, this will work, but hey, this is a role-playing game. Try other combinations. If you are by nature a thinking person, try boosting your strength and leaving the wisdom and charisma lower. You may find it very easy to hack and slash your way through the game, but will limit the amount of outsmarting your opponents. By filling your charisma and adding to wisdom, you'll become a smooth talking charmer, capable of nabbing the essentials from your foe simply by talking. No aggression necessary. By boosting your dexterity and intelligence and adding a bit to charisma and wisdom, you'll find getting past the less cunning opponents to be a snap. Do not feel as though you need to remain within the character class that you started with. Your character is dead. You've lived through all the classes already, and interacting with the Planescape environment will trigger past memories. Perhaps in death I still hold some shred of use for you. This means you can easily shift focus from one kind of specialty to another. Along the way, you'll encounter the chance to get tattoos. These help you in various ways and should be gotten when possible. They can increase your experience points or hone skills such as aim or remembering past events. Also, remember that the game is designed with virtually no wrong answers. And while you can die in the game, it has enormous replay value. And thus starting over is a lot like starting a different game. So remember, get tattoos, don't be afraid to try new things, and don't fixate on saving. Look at the game more like a walk in a really bizarre park, and not a race to the finish line. Just wish I could increase my strength and dexterity that easily. Well, if you have more tips on Planescape Torment, bring them to our chat Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. And remember, this is the last chance for you to enter our No Fear Downhill Racing Bike Quiz. Come to the GameSpot TV website and enter it by midnight, Sunday, March the 5th. So until next time, bye-bye.